Okay, here we are, it's getting better and better. Now, as you can see, I disassembled pretty much almost everything except the the, the, the mask, the, the, the focusing screen. And I did this because I'm gonna tell you about the different parts of the camera and what they're called and what they, kind of what like they do. So, first of all, you have the most visual thing. I mean, you're gonna be looking through this all the time. It's called the focusing screen. You can, you can change it and it will, it will have the lines over here and it will show, uh, the, the little flash thing there, the, the the battery, the battery or the can you even see it? It will have the battery or the film slide, the dark slide, and it help the crank. So it has three little lights there and whenever you push the button it will show an error. Um, depending on the mode that you are or if everything is connected. Um, that will be the focusing screen. And then it has wow. this gold plated contacts. Uh, up here and some of them provide actually voltage some of them is like a six volts over here three volts over here and there's grounds on this side and all this is to communicate with the uh, auto exposure priest finder um, it will connect the lens to the film holder to tell you know what is the aperture that you have in the lens what is the ISO you have in the back and it will tell the priest finder so it can do these calculations for the auto exposure um, if you're using the R RB67, I repeat that, RB, um, that one, uh, you have to cover this, there is a little plastic cover that comes with the, with, when, when you buy this, and you have to cover this in order to use that old uh, prism finder from the RB67, or even the, the PD prism or the PD magnifying finder, it's better that you cover this uh, so you don't have any issues with the, with the camera. This over here uh, is this called the lens lens alignment dot, and each lens has a has a little line over here with a dot, and you gotta put every every line together, and then you turn the lens to lock it. So that's that's what the lens alignment dot. Then it has a mirror there. It's a huge mirror. Um, they definitely recommend you not to touch it as much as you can, but obviously it's a camera. It gets dust. You gotta clean it, but definitely don't put a finger or anything because it gets very cranky. And then and, and it's very, I mean, you can move it with your finger, but they are definitely do not recommend you to do this. Um, and every time you, you, you shoot, this mirror will go up, and then the curtains back here, this is the curtain, would actually flip up and let the light pass and then go down. Um, but uh, it happens all in a you know really fast this actually will open and the lens will actually still be closed in this case the lens is very wide open but the lens actually closes itself before the exposure happens then uh, you have a this is an auxiliary electronic shutter release context so uh, when you can see all this uh, this actually communicator right over here and it communicates with the lens because the lens has the shooter inside so the lens has to tell the camera to shoot and this is the way that they communicate then you have um, over here is a shooter release button and as you can see some old cameras um, not all of them it has a little thread there where you can put a a, a, a manual little pump what is it we call it? Those little uh, cable triggers. You screw it in there, and then you press it, and then oh, I actually squeeze it from inside. And also, it has this little extra knob. It's, it's called the uh, color um, the stop lever. So if you put it on this side, on the on the put you press it down, and then you turn it this way. See that little dot there. Um, uh, it will it will lock it and then you cannot shoot it and then this is the normal mode and then this actually will lock it in there this this right here when you turn it it kind of locks in there so it doesn't go that way it can go this way and it can stop but it cannot go that way see now I can press it so you have to actually press it down and then turn it that way and that will be like a uh, in this mode, it doesn't use the battery. It's everything is going to be shot at 250, regardless of whatever you have over here. 
everything's gonna be shot at 250 so that's this when the battery dies you can actually still use it if you put it on that mode the camera doesn't do any objection doesn't do any check-ins or anything as you can see I can crank it and actually it's been shooting without any issues but if I put it down here where it should be then I cannot crank it no more all right uh, we go back again this is called the dual focusing knob it's on the right side and then this is the focal length scale there is um, a curved lines over here as you can see and they represent the, the focal lengths uh, of most of the, of the lenses over here so you can see it goes from the lens 50 to 50, 65, 75, 90, 110 all the way to 360 there is more lenses, yes. Uh, I think the the widest is the 35, and they're not on this scale. But you can pretty much get an idea of where kind of where they're going. I have the 110, so my bar will be right here, and this will be the the, the focal length scale. So, whenever the the the, focal, the curve intersects with the with the distance, the 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 graduation the the graduation over here is gonna it's gonna indicate how much light you lose so uh, let's say your light middle tells you it's of you know f6 but you you have to focus at this distance so you're losing uh, 0.5 steps so you have to do you know f5.5 you know just open it in half or open a whole step if you go all the way to the dark side and actually it becomes from lighter medium dark and then dark side and it's, it's all depending on your lens. After a while, this you don't even need to look at this. But it's a cool feature that they they added on the on the camera, so you don't need to actually have it on mine. And if you're a perfectionist, then this can be really helpful. Uh, I have seen it a couple of times. I I wrote about it, and I learn it, and I never use it. <laughs> um, you also have the distance scale on on this side, uh, which goes on meter and feet. Um, I guess you can find out through the pictures on the internet. It goes from 0.9 to, to 10. And then uh, you have, obviously, this is the cocking lever. And in this single operation, just as moving it down, you can advance the film, crop the shutter, and set the mirror to do the next shoot. So as in one, sh one step, you can actually do all that stuff. And that's not pretty, pretty new. I mean, a lot of cameras can actually do that in one step. And obviously, new cameras don't even need to do that. But in all school times, I mean, this, this if you compare it with a 35 millimeter, is probably a lot of hustle. But this, because of the size, is can is very very close to be compared to like a large format. The the, the smallest one of the large format, which would be the 4x5, um, which is a little bigger. But this will be like a baby the baby of the of the large format cameras and those cameras are very manual you have to I mean there's nothing really easy on those cameras you have to set up every single step if you want to reframe and then you can only shoot one frame and um, and this will be more of a that's what it's called medium format and then finally we have the on this side on the front side of the camera the, we have the RM lever um, which I don't know why they call it RM it should be called MR um, <laughs> because the, the the order that this is it, but um, I guess the M is not usually used. The R you just put it so you can be able to turn the back, and then as soon as you move something or press this button over here, the R um, goes back to its normal state. Um, and you just put it on the R just to rotate the back, and then it goes back to normal shooting, or you can go to manual shooting. Uh, multiple exposure so it will s when you set it to M it will disengage the film transport when when you're cocking the shooter so it doesn't and it doesn't gonna get returned to the center if, if you move anything so it will it will pretty much stay there um, or if you want to use the camera without the film you can actually go on this side too they are it will I just saw you just to, to rotate the back that will be for the for the front part of the camera. Now on the other side of the camera, um, as you can see, same as the front. This is called uh, an alignment mark, and 
this basically tells you to to put this on this side because um these if I put it on R this actually can rotate see and I can this and I can take out the back like this and this and this could be locked on this side if it's not on R and I cannot move it and then, then I will be having a problem to put the, the back in here so I see that circle in this over here so I have to put it in R and then move this to that side and that, that will be the, the alignment mark so this way it will tell you so you can actually put most of the elements are like hit this and I'm talking about um, the backs this box it needs to be like that but then there are some other elements I believe uh, the Polaroid back the Polaroid back actually requires you to put this thing sideways and the the digital back some of the digital backs you actually have to put this sideways especially the the the, the leaf backs adapters for the the Mamiya the mount you have to put this sideways in order to put it uh, so it, just read the, the instructions. If you have a, a normal bag for the RC Pro 2, then you just go with the flow. Put this on the line, and then it should be fine. This is called uh, revolving ring, and this is the the small orange circle. Um, there is only two positions. It's either 12 o'clock or 3 o'clock, and that depends on on what your your adapter or your bag requirements are, and this is called a film advance coupler and this one will transmit the, the the turning into the back and let me get it back over here into that spot right there and it will make a turn and this one either the back is like this or like this you can see it's only one this one actually has two it has one up there or one down here so if the back is here or here it will always hit one of those two um, then we have the light light baffle. It's on the back here. When it's cranked down, you can you can actually see it in there. If you shoot it, you're gonna see through the camera. See, and all this is gonna be black until you crank it up again, and then you're able to to actually see whatever your image is. So when you shoot, don't be scared that everything becomes black because you need to crank it up again so you can actually see the next picture. The, the mirror will stay up. Um, these are mounter pins for uh, mount pins for the film. It's called film holder mount pin. There, there are four of them. And then um, there is the battery chamber cover over here. The contacts for the power winder, and the tripod socket, and the winder coupler uh, cover. You really need to be careful with that one if you have a winder. You need to open this. Never put the wind because it will not. It will not scream. It will not tell you anything. And you see, the winder has a little crank in there, and this is really strong. There's no way that you can stop it with your hand unless you don't have battery on it. Um, but when it's trying to move, it will. It will like go really hard on the camera. It will start like peeling it off, or uh, it's very bad if you, you don't open it. So just make sure that you have that completely open before you you p put your your winder in the camera. And then you have, we are on the side, you have your hot shoe, um, you have your your focusing knob, of course, and then your lock lever, uh, focusing knob lock lever. And then uh, you have a lock release button on this side. This apparently doesn't do much on this side, but once you hit a AEF, it pops out and then it doesn't let you move. So you have to press it out. And you can go anywhere over here, back and forward. It's just when you hit the A, E, F, it doesn't want you to, to let it move. So this is a good thing if you have the, the winder up here. If not, um, you just got to keep reminding to press that if you're going to be going back and forward, like spinning around the wheel with the context. You have to press that little button. It is not hard. It's, not, it's just like a little car button or something like that. And the carrying strap lug. That will be for the parts of the, or the best basic of the camera. 